Writing content for your website is the worst. You have to figure out how to represent your brand while answering all your visitors' questions and converting them into paying customers, but you also have to worry about ranking in Google. Trying to figure out all these pieces can be a nightmare, and it's the number one reason small businesses don't finish their website. So let's forget about that and make it super easy. By the end of this video, you're gonna have a one-click solution to generate a beautiful first draft of any page of your website. A few days ago, the owner of Apex Doors, Caleb, sent me an email saying, I have watched nearly all of your YouTube videos and implemented all the best practices, I would like to see what you would further optimize. So using Caleb's site as an example, I'm gonna show you my exact process for creating content for websites. You're going to see why creating pages for search engines does not work anymore, what does work now and is likely to keep working for the foreseeable future, and of course my exact process for easily creating high quality page content. So let's get started. So like Caleb said, he's been implementing a lot of SEO best practices on his website. He has his main terms in the H1 of his homepage. He's listing the areas he serves. He has calls to action sprinkled throughout the pages. He lists all his main services on his homepage. He's also created a page for each of his main services, including commercial door installation, bathroom partitions, and the kicker, he's created pages for each area he serves. These are all best practices in SEO and every small business should be doing all of these things. In fact, Apex Store's website has only been around for a few months and they're already getting some traffic from some of their main terms, like Commercial Doors Tulsa and Custom Doors. However, if we use this Google Location Changer to simulate a search from Tulsa, Oklahoma for one of the terms he's ranking for, Commercial Doors Tulsa, we can see he's not yet in the map pack and he's ranked three in the blue links. Now the number one site ranking organically is called Commercial Door LLC, well-played Commercial Door. It's gonna be very hard to outrank someone whose business name is the term you're trying to rank for. But let's look at the number two ranked website, ProDoor. Here we have ProDoor's homepage. It's not the best homepage I've ever seen, but let's go ahead and compare it to Apex Doors. And you tell me, if this was your first impression of each website, what company would you want to contact first? Now in Caleb's defense, sure, there's a bunch of words on the page. However, that's just more information from Google right? We need to put all these words on the page so we can rank for the terms we want to rank for. And I actually think that's where Caleb went wrong. The truth is, nowadays, you don't have to sacrifice user experience for search rankings. In fact, every year, user experience is a bigger factor in search rankings, meaning that Google's algorithm is getting better and better at understanding whether or not users are having a good experience on your website. And if they are, you can rank higher as a result. Not only that, but all this content, these big blocks of text that hurt user experience, aren't necessary for ranking well in Google. So why is page content important for ranking in Google? First and foremost, it's to help Google understand what the page is about. You wanna have a clear idea of what search terms would lead people to this page, and then make it very clear to Google that this page is relevant for those terms. However, this doesn't require a lot of text. Often the H1 or the title of the page can do 90% of the work here. There are plenty of examples of pages with less than 200 words that are ranking for very competitive search terms. The second is just to provide a positive user experience. And this goes back to what I was saying before, but you wanna make it really easy for the visitor to find the information they're looking for. And finally, you want to fully address the user's query. So sometimes it does make sense to have a lot of text on the page. The question to ask yourself is, what information would a searcher hope to find when searching for the query we're targeting with this page. Make sure all of that information is covered on the page, but nothing else. We don't want any fluff. So with that in mind, how should we go about designing a home page or a service page? So first and foremost, we have to have a query in mind. For your home page, this is typically going to be your company's main search term. What are people most likely to type into Google when they're searching for a company like yours? So for Apex, this is going to be something like commercial doors or custom doors. Now you might say, wait, Apex also makes bathroom partitions, so we should also be trying to rank the homepage for that, right? No, almost always, if you have two competing search terms you're trying to rank for, you want two different pages. And that's what Caleb has done really well by making a separate page for each service they offer. Now at this point, you might be asking, wait, does he need a separate page for commercial doors if he's already optimizing his homepage for commercial doors? This is where it gets a little tricky. My rule of thumb is that if 80% or more of your business comes from a single service, 
Your homepage can just be the official page for that service, and you don't need a separate page. Otherwise, each service should have its own page. But then what should you optimize your homepage for? Your homepage should always be optimized for your biggest keyword, the one you most want to rank for. Now, in some cases, this is going to mean that your homepage is optimized for the same term as one of your service pages. And that feels weird, but I do think it's the best option in those cases. So for Apex Doors, his biggest keyword might be commercial doors, in which case, his homepage and his commercial doors page would optimize for that term. On the other hand, maybe his big main term is custom doors, and then his homepage would be optimized for custom doors. It would require doing some actual keyword research to say for sure. And then finally, common modifiers also deserve their own page. This is one of the easiest ways to rank as a local small business. This is exactly what Caleb has done with the areas we serve page. So in this case, Bartlesville? would be a modifier because someone might type commercial doors Bartosville into Google. If Apex competitor does not have a page targeting that search term and Apex does, they can outrank them just by default, even if they're a smaller company or have less brand authority. The beauty of service area pages is you can actually rank for terms without the modifier when the user just happens to be in Bartosville. And this is exactly what we see when we look at Caleb's data. So it looks like they just added these areas we serve pages about a month ago, and they're already starting to get traffic. It's not much, but these pages are super easy to make. And if each one just gives you a little bit of traffic, they're well worth it. But if you look at the queries that are bringing traffic to the page, most of them don't have that area's term in them. A lot of them do include Tulsa, but you can see he's getting traffic to Bartlesville and Owasso, even though the queries don't contain that city. And this is very common. Google knows where you live. So generally, service area pages are gonna be the first modifiers you go after. But for most small businesses, there's gonna be a lot of modifiers that people commonly add to your main search terms. Identifying each of these and making a separate page for them is perhaps the most effective strategy for SEO right now. All right, so we know what terms we're trying to rank for. We know what pages we need to build. How do we figure out what content to put on the page? Well, like I said before, we need to consider what information a searcher hopes to find when they're searching for this query. And so then we could go through this whole process of identifying all the information we need to include on the page, or we could just let AI do it. So I'm gonna show you the exact workflow I use, and I'll give you all of my prompts so you can do this yourself. And then I'll give you some tips for making this actually look good on your website. Because again, we want a good user experience. So the first step is just to create a master document with all the information you can find about your company and industry. And if you plan to keep using AI workflows like this, this document is gonna become invaluable. It is so important that the AI has all the context around your business to accurately represent it. And that's what this document's going to do. Now I'll have another video on how I create these for each of my clients. So you can do it for yourself. For this video, we're going to do the lazy method, which is again, having AI do it. So in the description, there's a link where you can get this document. And the first tab on this document is a prompt that you can give to Gemini Deep Research or Claude Deep Research or ChatGPT Deep Research. They all have a deep research function. I just like Gemini. And all you're gonna do is fill in each of these tabs with your brand, Apex Doors, area, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and then we'll paste in their URL. And all you have to do is copy this, paste it into Google Gemini and hit Deep Research, go. Now this is going to take five or 10 minutes, but don't worry. I already did this earlier. Google gave me this beautiful brand document talking all about Apex stores and their industry. We're just going to export this and then we could share the Google doc, but I find it easier to just download. Now the next step is to provide this information to a Claude project or a Gemini gem or a ChatGPT project with clear guidance on how to write the page. And don't worry, I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to give it. The next tab on the document is the SEO writing guide. You can read this if you want. It just explains how to write good content for SEO. And the tab after that are the project instructions. So this is like a prompt that comes before the prompt. You're gonna give it to the project once, and then every time you use the project, it'll just already have this context. Let me show you how I have it set up in Claude. So this is my Claude project I've called Homepage Generator. To create a project, you just click the Projects button in the left sidebar. It's pretty much the same thing in ChatGPT or Gemini. I just like Claude for this particular task. So the cool thing about projects is their project knowledge, which has two parts to it. The first is the instructions. So you're gonna take the prompt instructions from the document and paste them in here. This tells it how it's supposed to work. And second, you can provide documents for the project. So here's where you're gonna drag in that homepage template. And then we're also gonna drag in our SEO writing guide. Now that the project is set up, you never have to do that part again. Every time you wanna create a homepage, 
you just drag in that company information doc we made with deep research. So I'll go ahead and drag in the one for Apex Doors. Make sure Extended Thinking's on. Claude Sonnet 4 will be good for this, and go. And now Claude's going to look through all the documents we provided, review the project instructions, think for a while, and then write a beautiful draft for a homepage. And here you can see it's drafting each section provided in the template. Now, most likely, you're not gonna be able to just copy and paste the content from here onto your website. You're gonna to wanna to review it, make some changes. It might recommend some sections that don't make sense. But for the most part, this should give you a great starting point and take out most of the headache of coming up with content for your website. Now, as you can see here, this is still a good amount of text. And for most local businesses, I actually do recommend putting a lot of text on the page. With Apex Doors, isn't so much the amount of text, but the density. There's also just a lot of information that visitors probably don't care to know while they're reviewing the homepage. So starting from the top here, Surface areas are generally not something you need to show above the fold. The area above the fold is incredibly valuable. I do like that Apex Doors has a form here that makes sense for some businesses and not for others. Typically, the higher the ticket price, the less it makes sense to put a form right at the front. But this is a great place to put a video or photo or testimonial, something that really showcases your brand. Service areas are mostly for search engines, and they're good to have on the page but I would put them further down. Improving user experience is mostly about just giving more space and splitting up text sections with graphic elements. So this next row here should have an image on one side with the text on the other side, and there should be more space above and below the row. The service grid is great, but we need more space between the elements, and we don't need to put this much text about each service on the homepage. Put enough text that they understand what the service is, and then give them the option to visit that services page to learn more. If you just continue to add a lot of space and make sure you don't have two text sections touching each other, you'll end up building a much prettier page that provides a much better user experience. Not only will users appreciate these pages more, but they will rank better and they'll convert better too. Once you finish the home page, move on to service pages and then pages targeting queries with modifiers. I call these keyword targeted sub pages. And again, the most valuable version of this are service area pages. So in the document shared in the description, I have shared both instructions and templates for the home page and service page. So naturally you might be asking, wait TJ, what do I use for the service area pages? Well, that depends. What query is the service area page modifying? If this is a service area for one of your services, then you should use the service template. But if this is a service area for your company, then you should use the homepage template. In Apex's case here, his service area pages are essentially just home pages for that service area. And so that's how he should treat them. He should use the homepage template when he's generating the content and then just duplicate his homepage for that area. One of the biggest mistakes people make with service area pages is they think they need to talk about that area a bunch to rank for it. But you don't do this on your homepage, right? You want your homepage to rank for the main area that you're in, but you don't feel like you need to talk about landmarks and points of interest throughout the page. It's the same thing with your service area pages. Going back to why page content is important for ranking, we just need to help Google understand what the page is about. We don't need to shove the service area in there over and over again. Just get it in the title of the page. Talk about it when it makes sense to talk about it. Inserting it more into the copy is not gonna improve your rankings. A lot of people make the mistake of just duplicating their service page over and over again and trying to change some of the content here and there. If you look at Caleb's service area pages, this content down here is identical on every one. However, if you're using this process to generate content, just run the process again for each page. This will give you completely unique pages with the same core information and messaging. You satisfy Google because it's unique content and you satisfy the visitor because they're all getting the same high quality homepage that's optimized for their area. And because you can generate it in one click now that your system is built, it doesn't take any extra time to make these unique pages. If you would like me to do a free audit of your website, visit tjrobertson.com and fill out the form at the bottom of the page. Overall, Caleb, I think you're doing a great job with Apex Doors. Keep implementing SEO best practices and consider rebuilding each of these pages with the searcher in mind.